Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Oracle Modern Customer Experience 2017. Brought to you by Oracle. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are live here at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas for theCUBE special coverage of Oracle's Marketing Cloud's event called Modern CX for Modern Customer Experience. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE with Peter Burris, head of research for SiliconANGLE, wikibon.com. This is our wrap up of day one. We got day two coverage tomorrow. Uh, Peter, we saw uh, some great news from Oracle on stage. I'll see modernizing their platform, the positioning, certainly how they're packaging the offering of a platform with the focus of apps, with the additive um, concept of adaptive intelligence which gives the notion of moving from batch to real time, data in motion, and then a series of other enhancements going on, but, and, and the guests we talked to have been phenomenal, but what's coming out of this, at least in my mind, I would love to get your reaction to today, is data. Data is the key, and it's clear to Oracle is differentiating with their data. They have a database, they're now bringing their cloud suite concept to marketing, and, and extending that out. Uh, interesting. AI's in there, they got some chatbots, so some, some sizzle, but the steak, the steak is the data. So you get the sizzle and you got the steak. Well, we heard, you're absolutely right, John. We heard, we heard today a lot, and I think this is a terminology that we're going to hear more frequently, is this notion of first person data versus third person data. Where first person data is the data that's being generated by the business and the business's applications, and third person data being data that's generated by kind of this, the, the noise that's uh, happening in a lot of other people's first person data. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest challenges in the industry. And Oracle has a, an inside track on a lot of that first person data because a lot of people mm -hmm. are big time Oracle customers for big time operational acts, uh, applications that are today delivering yeah. big time revenue into the business. In, in the spirit of, of marketing speak at these events, you hear things, it's outcomes, digital transformation, it's all about the outcomes. Agree, that's standard, we hear that. But here we're seeing something for the first time, you identified it in one of our interviews um, um, with Jack um, Horowitz, we said 150 milliseconds, it's a speeds and feeds oh, game. Yeah. So Oracle's premise, the, you pointed out, and I'd like to get more deeper on this because this is about not moving the data around if you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. This, this is interesting. This is a centerpiece of Wikibon's research right now, is that if you start with a, uh, with a proposition that we increasingly, through digital transformation, are now talking about how we're going to use data to differentiate business, then we need to think about what does it mean to design business, design business activities, design customer promises around the availability of data or the desire to get more data. And data has a physical element. Moving data around takes time, and it generates cost. And we have to be very, very careful about what that means, let alone some of the legal and privacy issues. So we think that there's two things that all businesses are going to have to think about, the relationship between data and time. Number one, can I serve up the right response, the right business action faster than my competitors, mm -hmm. which is going to matter. And number two is, can I refine and improve the quality of my models that I'm using to serve things up faster than my competitors. So it's a, it's a cycle time on what the customer needs right now, but it's also a strategic cycle time in how I improve the quality of the models that I'm using to run my business. What's also interesting is some things that, you, again, that you're doing on the research side that I think plays into what's the conversations and the content and conversations here at Oracle's modern CX event is the notion of the, the business value of, of, of digital. Oh yeah. And I think, and I want to get your reaction to this because this is some insight that I saw this morning through my interviews, is that um, there are, there are jump in points for companies to start in this transformation. Some are more advanced than others, some are at the beginning, some are in kindergarten, some are in college, some are graduated, and, and so, 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 and so, so on and so forth. But the key is, you're seeing an agile mindset and that was a term that was here. We had the Agile Marketer, the author of the Agile Marketer uh, here on our Roland Smart, who wrote the book, Agile Marketer. But Agile can be applied, because technology is now everywhere, but with data and now software, you now have the ability to not only instrument, but also get value models from existing and new applications. Well, let's bring it back to that fundamental point that you made up front, because it's the right one. None of this changes if you don't recognize these new sources of data, typically and increasingly, the customer being a new source, and what we can do with it. So go back to this notion of agile. Agile works when you are, as we talked about in the interview, when you have three things going on. First off, the business has to be empirical, it has to acknowledge that 
these new sources of information are useful. You have to be willing to iterate, which means you have to sometimes recognize you're going to fail and not kill people who fail as long as they do it quickly. And then you have to be opportunistic. When you find a new way of doing things, you got to go after it as hard as you possibly can. And verify it, understand it, a and then double down on absolutely. it. Absolutely, yeah, customer centric and all the other yeah. stuff. But if you don't have those three things in place, you are not going to succeed in this new world. You have to be empirical, you have to be iterative, and you have to be opportunistic. Now, take that, tie, tie that back to uh, some of the points that you were making. At the, at the end of the day, we heard a lot of uh, practitioners as well as a lot of Oracle executives I don't want to say be challenged to talk about the transformation or the transition, but sometimes they use different language. But when we push them, it all boiled down to, for the first time, our business acknowledged the value of data and specifically customer data in making better decisions. The roadmap always started with an acknowledgement of the role that data is going to play. And the pilots that we heard from Time Warner's CMO, Kristen O'Hara, pointed out really brilliantly that she did pilots as a way to get started, but she had to show the proof. But not instant gratification. It was, okay, we'll give you some running room, three feet in a cloud of dust, go see what happens, hang, here's enough rope to hang yourself or be successful, but getting those proof points to your point of iteration. You don't need to hit the home run right out of the gate. Absolutely not, in fact, typically you're not. But the idea is, you know, people talk about how frequently product launches fail. Uh, products, you know, the, the old adage is it fails 80% of the time. Uh, we heard a couple of uh, we heard a couple of people talk about how s other research firms uh, have done research that suggests that 83 or 84 percent of leads are useless to salespeople. Uh, we're talking about very very high failure rates here, and just little changes, little improvements in the productivity yeah. of the, of those activities have enormous implications for the revenue that the business is able to generate and the cost that the business has to consume to generate those revenues. I want to get your reaction to, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, all I was going to say is that it keep, but it all starts with that fundamental observation that data is an asset that can be uh, utilized differently within business, and that's, the, uh, that's, that's what we believe is the essence of digital business. The other, other reaction I'd like to get your thoughts on is a word that we've been using on theCUBE, that you have brought it up here first in the, in the conversation here, empathy to users. And then we hear the word empowerment, they're calling about heroes as their theme, but it's really empowerment, right? Enabling people in the organization to leverage the data, identify new insights, be opportunistic, as you said, and, and jump on these new way of doing things. So that's a key piece. So with empathy for the users, which is the customer experience, and the empowerment for the people to make those things happen, you have the convergence of ad tech and martech, marketing tech, advertising tech and marketing tech, known as ad tech and martech, coming together. One was very good at understanding collective intelligence for which best ad to serve where. Now, the infrastructure's changing. MarTech is an ever-evolving and consolidating you know, ecosystem with winners and losers coming together, okay? And changing, so the blender of ad tech and MarTech is now becoming re-platformed for the enterprise. How does a, a practitioner who's looking at solutions like Oracle and others grok this concept, because they know about ads, and someone buys the ads, but also they have marketing systems in place, and sales clouds. Well, I think, I think and, and again, it's this, this notion of hero, and empowerment, uh, and enablement, all of them boil down to, are we making our people better? And I think in many respects, a way of thinking about this is the first thing we have to acknowledge is that the data is really valuable. The second thing we have to acknowledge is that when we use data better, we make our people more successful we make our people more valuable. We talk about customer experience, well employee experience also matters, because at the end of the day, those employees and how we empower them and how we turn them into heroes is going to have an enormous impact on the attitude that they take when they speak with customers, their facility at working with customers, the competency that they bring to the table, and the, and, uh, the, and the degree to which the customer sees them as a valuable resource. So in many respects, the way it all comes together is, we can look at all these systems, but are these systems in fact making the people that are really generating the value within the business more or less successful? And I think that's got to be a second touchstone that we have to keep coming back to. Some great interviews here this morning, on day, this day on day one. Got some great ones tomorrow, but two notables. I already mentioned the CMO, Kristen O'Hara, who was a Time Warner, great 
great executive, made great change in how that they're changing their business practices to, to, as well as the financial outcome. But the other one was Jack Berkowitz. And we had an old school moment. We felt like a bunch of old dogs <laughs> and historians <laughs> talking about the OSI, Open Systems Interconnect model, seven layers of openness, of which it only went halfway. Stopped at TCPF. You can argue some other stuff was standardized. And, but really, if you look at the historical perspective, and I want to, it was really fun because you can also learn, you can learn about history as it relates to what's happening today. It's not always going to be the same, but you can learn from it. And, and, and that moment was this grokking of what happened with TCP IP as a standardization coalescing moment. And it's not yet known yet in this industry what that will be. We sense it to be data, it's not clear yet how that's going to manifest well, itself, here, or is it to you? Yeah, well, here's what I'd say, John. I, I, think, you're, I think you're right, uh, that uh, kind of the, the history moment was, geez, wasn't it interesting, the TCP IP, the OSI stack, and they're related, they're not the same, obviously, but that it defined how a message, standards for moving messages around. Now, messages are data, but it's a specialized kind of a data. And then what we talked about is when we get to layer seven, it's going to be interesting to see how, what kind of standards are introduced, in other words, the presentation layer, the application layer. What kind of standards are going to be introduced so that we can enfranchise multiple sources of cloud services together in new ways. Now, Oracle appears to have an advantage here. Why? Because Oracle's one of those companies that can talk about end-to-end. -end. And what Jack was saying, and it goes back again, and one of the first things we mentioned in this wrap, is that it's nice to have that end-to-end -end capability so you can look at it and say, when do we not have to move the data? And the, and the very powerful concept that Jack introduced is that Oracle's going to, you know, or he threw the gauntlet down and he said, we are going to help our customers serve their customers within 150 milliseconds. On a worldwide basis, anywhere that customer is in the world, any device, yeah. We're going to help our customers serve their customers. That means, in that means pulling data from any database, anywhere, first party, third party, all unified into one. But you can do it if and only if you don't have to move the data that much. Yeah. And that's going to be one of the big challenges. Oracle starting from an end-to-end -end perspective that may not be obviously cloud-baked, other people starting with a cloud-native perspective but don't have that end-to-end -end yeah. capability. Who's going to win is going to be really interesting. And that 150 millisecond test is, I think, going to emerge as a crucial test in the industry about who's going to win. And we will be watching who will win, and because we're going to be covering it on siliconangle.com and wikibon.com, which has got great research. Check out wikibon.com, it's subscription only. Join the, join the membership there, it's really valuable data, headed up by Peter, and of course, theCUBE at siliconangle.tv is bringing all the action. I'm John Furrier, Peter Burris, day one, here at the Mandalay Bay at the Oracle Modern CX, hashtag Modern CX. Uh, tweet us at theCUBE, glad to chat with you. Um, stay tuned for tomorrow, thanks for watching. Robert Hershevik. People obviously know you from Shark Tank, but the Hershevik group has been...